What's going on everybody? So it's been a while since I've done an unboxing of any sorts. Um, but I picked this up from Costco. It was part of their Black Friday deal. And uh, they had like this whole aisle of Black Friday items. And uh, it's well after Black Friday of course, but they still had the sale prices there. And um, it's amazing how much Black Friday has changed over the years after people stumble and slaughter each other over a uh, microwave oven or something. But I did not have to stumble, slaughter anybody or anything to get this Gourmia French Door XL Digital Air Fryer Oven. Um, I saw it. We were big fans in my house of air fryers. Um, so I wanted to get this one because it looks like it's got better capacity i like the the design i got they had the product on the floor so you could actually check it out and um, i actually like the design of the front doors and everything else so we're gonna unbox this and uh see what's all in here this is my old air fryer here I, it's, that's getting replaced it's the sur la table i think it's that's how you say it sur la table it's a smaller air fryer um, but the door design leaves a bit to be desired it's incredibly hard to clean this thing um, you get crumbs and everything down in there and it's, you can't really put water inside the inner thing. You really have to just wipe it the best you can. So we're going to sell this one off or donate it or whatever to somebody else. And we're going to go with this one. Uh, so I'm going to open it up here and let's just take a look at the box real quick. The top shows, you know, just kind of a little graphic on top of like, you know, a chicken in there and stuff. And uh, yeah, on the side it shows, uh, you know, nuggets and french fries or whatever in there. And uh, yeah, and so does the front actually. But uh, yeah, it's uh, air fry, do bagels, bake in it, uh, pizzas, dehydrate inside of it. I may even take the dehydrate mode for a ride and I may even do a video on that just because why not, right? Um, but yeah, you save a lot on your, like, some people, like myself, you know, try to cut out a lot of the fats these days, especially as I'm getting older, it's getting harder to keep that off. Um, this uh, says that it'll do fries uh, with less, 80% less fat on them. So uh, we've been using an air fryer for quite some time and I think it has helped, you know, like with excess oil or anything when you're eating, you know, cooking and eating and everything. So I'm trying to see if there's anything highlights wise on here I want to point out before we tear into this. Uh, it just says extra large capacity. It fits a 15 inch pizza, 20 pound turkey, 12 slices of bread, uh, up to the size of 15 by 13 inch pans as well. Um, 20 pound turkey, man, that's pretty big. I, I, I smoked a 20 pound turkey for Thanksgiving. So uh, let's go ahead and open her up, see what's inside. Uh, it's taped all the way down the sides too, so. Have to do both across and on the sides. All right, pop open the top. All right, on top, first thing we get is a little quick start guide from them. It's pretty cool. Um, then it has uh, some preset temperature info with time and everything for you to refer to if you just want to tear right into this thing and get going. So let's set these aside. Top of the old air fryer. <laughs> Comes with a little packet of stuff here. Uh, maybe a recipe book or something or manual. Oh uh, yeah. Recipe book and cooking chart. Oh yeah, it's got all kinds of stuff in here. Vegetables, snacks, desserts. But yeah, comes with its own little recipe book. Now the book isn't quite as nice as the Sur La Table one. The Sur La Table book um, or Sur La Table, whichever one you want to go with. Uh, we'll, we'll go with Sur La Table just to keep people's sanity. But their, their prints are nicer, at least on the uh, marketing material. Um, they have a little customer support card that came with it. And it uh, looks like the actual user manual for the item here uh, with, uh, yeah, customer service stuff, user manual, and uh, warranty info on the back. So I'm gonna set these aside, put it back in their little pouch for now. Let's get this guy out and take a look at him. All right, there's two big foam things. I'm not gonna lift this guy up. I'm actually going to maybe flip it on its back here and pull it out that way. So of course I'll flip it towards you so you can kind of see what's going on here. So I'll just kind of 
try to gently slide this out. If not, I'll flip it over and just lift the box off. Oops. Don't need the styrofoam anyways, although Costco does have an incredible return policy, even if you don't have the box. <laughs> Say something goes wrong with it in the next year. I just show up with the appliance, they'll still take it. Pretty good return policy, that's why I'm still a member there, I think. Although I've only had to repair, re, uh, I've only had to re, return uh, a couple of items, big items, I would say. All right, this is tedious. I'm gonna flip this box over. Flip the box over, let's go ahead and just do it this way. I'll cautiously check for anything falling out as I'm doing this. All right, nothing fell out. Okay, let's set the box aside. On top here we got some, uh, or bottom I should say. We got the uh, drip pan, grill grate. I'll set those aside for the moment. I want to get this unit out of this foam. So, it's actually incredibly light, believe it or not. Um, it's not overbearingly heavy. It's pretty deep, too. Man, I'm kind of glad I did take it out that way. The styrofoam's snug. Let's flip it up this way. Let's flip it up. Maybe you can learn from this video the best way to unpack this guy from me. Um, I just flipped it up, took the foam off. That actually turned out to be the easiest way to do this. Let me flip it back over this way. And we will take this, undo the plug first there. Take this side off. All right. Some plastic bag over it here. Oh man, beautiful, gorgeous stainless steel on it. I love the stainless steel look. All our appliances are stainless steel, if, uh, if you haven't noticed in this video. But we are big fans of stainless steel in this house. Ooh, I just got shocked too, because it's winter time. Static electricity, it is a thing. <laughs> so here we are. Very nice, man. Stainless steel body all the way through and through. We'll go ahead and take this little sticker guy off, tape to keep the door secure, obviously. Just pop that off. Okay. Let's see. Now these doors... Oh, can I pop this off too? Will they pop off when I... Okay. So these doors, what I like about them, they're kind of like that commercial kitchen style oven. How do I get this off? Remove before first use. No kidding. <laughs> Let's see if I can pop it open. I can. Okay. I was trying to be careful. So what I loved about this on the store floor is these doors. You open it, it's like one of those like commercial style ovens, you know. I worked in a restaurant for a hot minute um, and we had an oven that had the doors like this that swung open together like that. Makes it way more convenient. But look at the amount of real estate in there. I mean, that's pretty big. It's like an oven in itself. And um, if you're coming up with Christmas dinner time, I would think it'd be very cool to have like an extra oven on the side that you can do like the small things like pies or whatever in if you already got like your ham in the main oven. And uh, yeah, so it's always nice to have a uh, second oven on hands per se. So this acts like an oven, an air fryer, toaster, all in one really. A dehydrator apparently. So uh, let's see what's inside. On the inside, it looks like we got our elements on the bottom here. I believe these are elements or lights. No, I believe these are elements of sorts. Um, they look like ceramic elements or something. But I uh, got two sets on the bottom, two on top. And there's a fan in the back. Or, no. There's a fan on the side here that helps circulate the air around. So... Those of you that are new to the air frying world, 
All an air fryer is is basically just, it's just a kind of like a convection oven effect. Really it just cycles intensely hot air around the food and what you do is you put your oil, a light bit of oil on the food and that hot air circ circulating around acts kind of like a fryer because the oil gets piping hot on your food and the oil starts frying your food but you use way less of the oil but this will be our third air fryer <laughs> um, the first air fryer I got was a Kasori I demoed it and uh, but it, we got grew it pretty quick and then I had a Cuisinart so actually this is our fourth one we had a Cuisinart the Cuisinart kind of crapped on us so I returned the Cuisinart got my money back bought the Serla table one uh, the Serla table one uh, we're outgrowing it kind of and the door design kind of sucks on it so now they do have a newer one that has a better door design but I went with this one because of the real estate it's huge so let's get the grate in there and everything. So here's our grate and drip pan. I think there's, there's three different type of grates in here. Let's take a look at this. Take my scissors, pop this open, or tear it open, if you will. I'm the cook in the house most of the time, by the way, in case you haven't figured that out. Like if you've been following my channel for quite some time, I like cooking and stuff, so, and making beer and other things, but great number one, this will be the top one, I believe, or it can be rotated around, I'm sure. This is a, uh, this is a drip tray. Obviously you want it on the bottom to catch crumbs and stuff. It could act as a, uh, uh, drip and griddle tray as well. Uh, we also have a basket style tr tray here. This would be good for like chicken nuggets, french fries, those kind of things, you know, kid snacks or dinners or whatever. Just put your chicken nuggets on there, your french fries, or even air fry some chicken wings. And this is, uh, this is the bottom uh, tray for easy cleanup. So this will go on the very bottom of the uh, air fryer. So whenever you need to wipe the thing out from time to time, you just simply take this out, maybe wipe the walls down and put this back in when you're done cleaning it and yada, yada, yada. And it looks like you could now, if it's stainless steel, you could put this in your dishwasher and wash it. It feels like it's coated in something, like it's real smooth. Um, these are definitely stainless steel, at least these two racks here. But you don't want to put aluminum. If, these, if this is aluminum, which it might be aluminum, and this might be aluminum as well. You don't want to put aluminum products in your dishwasher. I have learned that the hard way. You destroy your aluminum when you put it in the dishwasher because of the, uh, the detergents are incredibly strong in your dishwashing detergents these days and they will destroy aluminum. So anyway, let's plug this thing in. Let me get this, these trays in. We'll plug this thing in, kind of give it an initial burn up, you know, just to burn all the manufacturing stuff out of it. Okay, guys, that's where our old air fryer was sitting. We're gonna put this new one over there. This one is a bit wider, so. But this thing, this thing weighs nothing, man. You can like literally, you can like literally toss it in the air. It weighs practically nothing. But it, depth wise, it takes up about the same amount of space as my old one. It's a little wider but that's what we wanted. So I'm gonna plug her in back here. All right, she made a nice little beep sound there. I have her set up just like that. I'm gonna open the front doors here. We're gonna get all our stuff in here. This tray just slides in on the bottom like so. This one can go on the next to bottom rack like that. And we'll go ahead and put this other one. Uh, I'll just put it on the second up, two racks up there. Actually, almost screwed up. This is great. <laughs> it's curved because the back of the air fryer is curved. So, let's see if I can get this right. So, it's supposed to go in there curved side to the back. Now the basket style tray is uh, not curved. It can go in either way really. So let's 
Go ahead and close this guy up. Man, this is a nice looking air fryer, man. Now the controls, I'm gonna set this, I'm gonna get the camera a little lower so you can get a little more straight on view of this thing. All right, we have different settings on this thing. We have French fries. So you have an air fry option. I guess you hit that button to switch to air fry mode. You have French fries, wings, bacon, vegetable snacks, seafood. So if you spritz a little oil on your veggies and you just wanna give them a little crisp crunch on the oil front there, fry them some, like a wok, I guess, like a wok effect, I guess. Um, you can actually do that to your veggies. There's a popcorn button, so you can do popcorn in this thing. You can slow cook in it, dehydrate, keep, it, keep your food warm. So if you got a pie or something for the holidays, throw it in there and it's already baked. You can put it on a warm mode setting maybe. Uh, you can reheat your food. There's a reheat option, pizza, broil, uh, convection. They have a convection bake option in there. Bagel, roast, bake, and toast. Pretty cool. So if I hit this guy, that turns it on, obviously. Let's go ahead and test out just, I don't know, I'm gonna set it on air fry. And automatically defaults to that, 425 for 20 minutes. Let's try french fries. And I'm just gonna start it. See how loud it is, although, actually it's way, way quieter than my Sur La Table. It's, it's almost not, it's not noisy at all. <laughs> it's very quiet. What can I compare the sound? You can't hear it on the camera because it's that quiet. Um, I hear the fan, but it's a very, 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 uh, almost like a PC fan. It sounds almost like a PC fan. Yeah. There are some vents in the back of this uh, guy, just like most air fryers. I can feel a little bit of air coming out of the back. All right, so I took you off the tripod for a second so I could show you those bottom elements that are lit up, the top elements are lit up. So you got the heat sources going. Uh, I believe they are ceramic heaters. I presume that you can replace them when they go bad. Um, and the fan is just blowing that fan on the side in there. You know, you can't really see it too well. Uh, you can see right there is a fan. That's what's circulating that super hot air around to give it that frying effect. There's nothing in there frying, but maybe I'll do a demo video here in the near future. Uh, heating up some kids nuggets and stuff in there or something. Okay, update. This is what happens when you don't read the instructions. You just like plug this thing in and go to town. The back of it actually gets pretty piping hot, so make sure you have some clearance back there. Um, and the side of the unit, it gets really hot too. So that's, that's something else you need to be aware of. This thing gets really hot. Um, it's not like, it's fairly, fairly warm. The back gets really hot. So don't have it up against anything plastic or whatever, or have anything plastic next to it. I would not advise that. Um, one thing it did is when I started it, it was actually doing a preheat. And so the fans are still incredibly low on it. I feel a lot of nice, good bit of heat coming out of the front of this thing. Um, it was in preheat mode and then uh, it came up and said add food. And so that's when you put the food in at that point after it's preheated and then hit start and it starts. So yeah. But it's still way quieter than my Sur La Table or Sur La Table one. Y'all can poke fun at that all day long if you want. How I say that. <laughs> Sur La Table table. Table table potato potato. Um, but yeah. All right. So that's the air fry uh, setting. We're gonna test the popcorn setting next. Okay guys, so um, I killed the uh, air fry setting. I let it run for like 12 minutes and I just killed it. But um, we're gonna test something I've never done in an air fryer before. And I did mention earlier that it gets really hot. The manual says to leave at least four inches on all sides, back and sides. So if you, got four in if you don't have the four inches of space behind your air fryer, I'm, I've got, you know, definitely enough space back here and I've got a tile 
back splash so I'm not too concerned about that as far as the heat part goes um, if you had like drywall or something I don't know maybe it's a fire hazard I have no idea anyways I was reading the manual while I was going through this process you know off camera of course this is actually a baking tray but <laughs> this is the, a baking tray but it's also you know you can use it as a drip tray as well or you know but you can also make popcorn in it. And uh, there's, <laughs> they tell you how to do it in the manual, so we're gonna do that. We're gonna test this out, because I've never done popcorn in an air fryer. So, here we go. Hit the popcorn button. Well, turn it on first. Hit the popcorn button. Hit start. It says it's already hot because I had it air frying, so it's already up the temp for popcorn. But normally it would have to preheat. But see how it's flashing add food? That's what I was talking about earlier about the air fryer. So what I'm gonna do now is in this tray, I should probably explain this first. Let me kill it for a minute. Trays are still a little warm. Anyways. This is, this is the air fryer mesh basket. But when you're doing popcorn, you simply flip it over and set it on your bake tray with your kernels and uh, make popcorn. So we're gonna test it out and see how that goes. We're gonna spread our popcorn seed. This is a brand new bottle of popcorn, by the way. I'm not gonna do a ton of popcorn, I'm just gonna do a little bit for test. I'll do a Let's do a quarter cup of popcorn. That's still quite a bit of popcorn, believe it or not. This makes quite a bit. So we're just gonna do a quarter cup. Just spread it on our tray. Now, I guess this would be similar to like an air pop effect. You could technically spritz it down with some coconut oil or something right now if you wanted to get a little coconut oil flavor on it. Then it says take this mesh guy here Put it on top, simply just put it on top of your tray. It actually sits on the tray. Is it? Yeah, it sits on the tray very well. <laughs> so there we go. Here's our tray with our popcorn. <laughs> let's do this. All right, it says add food, so let's do this. Pop it open. Go ahead and put the popcorn in. Only like a five minute time or two, so. Here we go. And hit start. Five minutes, we should have popcorn. Let's see how long it takes for our kernel to pop. Everybody knows how popcorn works though. So once it starts popping, it all starts popping. Like, a, like instantly. Oh, there went one. It means we're about to have a whole, oh, there goes another one. Yep, another one. All right, here we go. Yeah, they're all popping now, slowly. Yep. All right, that's pretty cool. Well guys, it definitely made popcorn. <laughs> and it popped every kernel. Uh, I did add one extra minute on it because I saw some kernels that were just a little slow to pop. But man, they all popped pretty much. I think there was like one or two in there that didn't. Man, that's pretty pretty impressive, to be quite honest. Never even thought to make popcorn in an air fryer. Well, it didn't burn it either. It didn't burn it, nothing. That's actually pretty cool, man. 
That's actually quite a bit of popcorn. Like if I scrounge this together, that's a, a decent sized bowl of popcorn right here. Uh, if you want to do like a single serving of popcorn, or maybe even two servings worth of popcorn here for a movie or something, that's pretty quick. No butter, no oil, nothing. No flavor either though. <laughs> you know, butter and oil and all that makes the flavor. I could see myself um, probably uh, drizzling a little bit of some coconut oil or something on the kernels. Or maybe like spritzing some oil on the kernels and a little bit of some salt in there and everything uh, to give it some flavor. But that's, that's the new air fryer I'm rolling with these days. Um, the Kasori one was fine. I, it just got to be too small. And then I had a Cuisinart and that, like I said before, Cuisinart kind of crapped on me and I took it back. And I got the Sur La Table one. And then the Sur La Table one still works fantastically fine. Just the design, it's got some design flaws as far as like keeping it clean and everything. But this one, the only thing so far about this one, this Gourmet one is that it radiates heat all around it pretty good. So you got little ones, you gotta make sure you keep their hands away from it. Uh, and don't put anything melty that could melt next to it. Other than that, man, so far, so far it looks promising. So hope you enjoyed this unboxing and my little popcorn demo here. And uh, maybe I'll do some other demos with it just for giggles, you know? So cheers. That was on Black Friday. I think it was a Black Friday price of $149 at Costco. I don't know what it is elsewhere. But um, great Christmas present if you haven't picked one up yet. So cheers, guys. We'll see you next time.